the morning. Um, I would love to share with you a little bit about my story and my uh, experience here at Center for Spiritual Living and what this place has come to mean to me. Uh, I began coming here over 10 years ago from a pretty broken place. I had left a, a really um, wonderful career as a choreographer and professional dancer in Chicago to move to Seattle for a relationship that quickly fell apart after arriving. And I found myself in a really uh, dark and lonely place that uh, I'd never really been in. I had no community. Uh, I was very depressed. I was working as a housekeeper and a barista to make ends meet. And my opinion of myself had, had never been lower in my life. And I was fortunate enough to meet somebody who introduced me to this place. And upon first entering the building, something pierced my, my heart and um, there was a glimmer of hope that there was more to my story and more to what was yet to come than I could see and that there was some hope and I needed to, to keep coming, uh, which I did. And I was a self-acknowledged tourist for a long time. I'd come in, I'd sit in the back, I'd cry, I'd leave, I wouldn't talk about it. Um, <laughs> But eventually the experiences got so profound that I knew I needed to dig deeper, so I began taking the classes and worked my way through all of them. And that's where the transformation and the growth really happened. And those two concepts, transformation and growth, are tricky, and I'll keep bringing them back up, um, because they are profound and they are work. And in those classes, I learned to challenge every self-deprecating notion I had about myself. I learned how to take every deeply held belief that I wasn't good enough or there was some intrinsic flaw in me that would mean I would always be unhappy and bring it to light and in many ways dissect it and start to heal it. Uh, and it was just a, an amazing thing. Uh, I became really good at manifesting things early on and started having fun with it. I manifested a new job as a Pilates instructor and began teaching dance again. I manifested more money, a better apartment. And after a few years, I, I decided it's time to take on the mother of all manifestations, my, my partner. And um, I thought, if I'm going to do this, let's just do it. So I put together a list that was like a five-year-old's letter to Santa. I wanted everything. It was like, <laughs> they've got to be gorgeous and perfect for me and nurturing and supporting yet challenging me in all the right ways. They have to be able to take all of my baggage, my garbage, my horrible behavior, my Gemini craziness and love me anyway. <laughs> they have to be financially secure. They have to offer me a life of travel and things that I wouldn't be able to do on my own. I mean, I just threw it out there and then it showed up. <laughs> yes. You would think, woohoo, but actually it terrified me. It scared the hell out of me. Um, and I did everything I could to push it as hard as I could and push it away and say no. And he kept looking at me saying, no, you, I see all you, I see this, I see the behavior, I don't care, I love you. And eventually I learned to breathe and to trust and to explore. And we've been together for eight years, married for six, legally for six months. Stand up, Johnny. Yay. So you can see that I got gorgeous. You'll have to take my word on the rest of it. Um, <laughs> over time, I, d I decided there was still something missing in my life. And after an intentions retreat with Kathy Ann, it became clear I needed to start choreographing and creating again. My, my soul was yearning for that. And if you've been to a retreat, you know that you're not to make anything happen. You're just to make it welcome. So one way I found I could make it welcome was to start taking a dance class. So I put it on the calendar for the week after the retreat. And uh, I walked in, was paying for the class, and the director's door was crapped, cracked open. And she said, Jason Olberg, is that you? Get your butt in my office. And I went in, and she said, I can't believe you walked in the door. I was just thinking about you. We had a choreographer quit for our summer show last week, and I thought Jason would be perfect, and I couldn't find your contact information. I didn't know what to do, and here you are. Well, you want to make a dance? And um, I laughed at this guy. I literally looked up at this guy and laughed and thought, yeah, yes, I'd love to make a dance. Um, <laughs> And it was a wonderful experience that has led to more and more experiences that have really allowed me to build a name for myself in this town. Um, to the point where I set a piece a year ago on a company called Seattle Dance Project that was so successful they asked me to be the, the choreographer in residence for this year and do an entire work, all of, uh, entire show all of my work. Which is a pretty amazing thing. Um, and I said, of course. Um, 
And after a deep listening retreat, I, I got that all my time teaching and, and doing adjunct work at University of Washington and Cornish College, it was time for me to finish my degree. So I approached Cornish and they said, we'd love to have you finish your degree. Um, aren't you doing that thing with Seattle Dance Project? I said, I, I am. And they said, well, we can work this into your degree. You'll be finished in a year and it'll all work out. You'll get credit for it. And I thought, this is amazing. Um, and then the dean said, well, now you're applying for, for UW grad school then, I assume. And I said, well, I, I hadn't really thought of it. She said, well, you should do it. The deadline's in a month. And I thought, well, all right, I'll throw my name in the hat. And it's a program that only accepts three people um, out of hundreds of international applicants because it's a paid program. And they took me. And um, so I'm thinking, God is so amazing. This is all so lined up. I've, I'm going to grad school because I'm going to finish my, my undergrad because I've got this this amazing opportunity to choreograph for Seattle Dance Project. This is incredible. And then everything started to fall apart. Rehearsals started getting pushed farther and farther back. My five and a half months to create a new show became four, then three, then two and a half. And then we started rehearsal and dancers started to drop out. My cast went from 10 to eight to seven to six. People started getting injured within the cast. There was all kind of tumultuousness happening. And through it all, my nature is to freak out and panic, and I wasn't. And there was this weird feeling that I couldn't really identify that was, that was calm, and I, it was the weirdest thing. And my husband kept saying, when are you gonna lose it? Because I'm, I'm preparing the ground for it, you know? <laughs> I'm, putting the, I'm putting the padding on the walls, go for it. But it wasn't happening. And something in me knew that all this was so lined up through spirit, it, it had to be all right, and it was going to be all right. And that held me through two weeks of performances that were insane and people getting hurt and replacing them. Till the last show, I was up at six in the morning learning choreography that I would do in the afternoon because somebody hurt their hip the night before. And there was all this insanity, yet it was the best reviews I'd ever had in my career. And there was this amazingness happening. And I realized on that last day when everything was falling apart, except me, that what that feeling was was peace. And that is not something that a neurotic, anxious, over-caffeinated ex-Catholic experiences in nature. <laughs> And I was so clear that that was directly related to my years here, my work here, my, my path here, my prayers, my study, that that has taught me a foundation that is unshakable even when the ground is moving. And it's not an easy thing, this growth, this change, this transformation. I think we hear these things and they sound like uh, cherry blossom springtime, but it's like Stravinsky-esque rite of spring. You're a little seed in a deep, dark hole, and when you realize that's what you are, your choices are stay here and rot or start sprouting and grow toward the light. And it's a push, and it's an amazing push. And when you finally break through in moments, it's incredible. And sometimes you realize, oh, that was just a layer. There's more to grow. My story's not done. Accepting that God loves me in my totality, who I am, as I am, that is a lifelong journey. Learning that every one of you is just as much a part of God as every, one, as every part of me, that's a lifelong journey. I don't have it perfect. My husband just reminded me this morning that I often confuse raise it and praise it with see it and yell at it. <laughs> and to be honest, I'm still trying to figure out how they're so vastly different. That's more of a journey. But this place has completely transformed my life. I can't imagine what my life would be without it. I can't imagine where I would be without it. I can't imagine the richness that would be lost. And if you are someone who is thinking of diving deeper, you have no idea the greater good to unfold in your life, the greater gift of your life itself and all things that are possible. And I can't encourage it enough. Thank you. Yeah.